So today we're going to be talking about equations of lines, and there are two main ones that we're going to look at today and that we're going to use to help us solve um, equations and to help us graph. So the first one is called slope-intercept form. This is one of the most common ones and what sometimes people refer to as y equals mx plus b. Um, the x and the y are variables, they change, but the m, hopefully we recognize, is the slope of the line, how much it changes, and the b is what we call the y-intercept. That is where we cross the y-axis. So if I have an equation like y is equal to 1 half x plus 7, I can see that on the y-axis it's going to cross at 7, and then every point from there goes up 2 and to the, uh, sorry, up 1 and to the right 2. So that's something um, helpful to watch out for. Now point slope form looks like this. It's y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Uh, this takes a point x1, y1. This is a constant. These are constant values, whereas the x and the y are variables. So um, again, m is the slope and the x and the y values are constant points. So if I have something such as y minus 2 is equal to 1 half x minus 3, I can see that the point, point here is 3, comma 2. So here, this goes through the point 3, comma 2. Now, why might this be a benefit? Well, what if the graph doesn't go through the y-axis at a integer value or a friendly point or is really, really, really high, like a million? In those cases, it's going to be very helpful for us to have some other point than just the y-intercept. Now, the nice thing is, we can change anything in point slope form to y or sorry slope intercept form and vice versa but uh, we'll mostly be taking these point slope forms and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be finding equations of lines based off of point slope form and then putting them into slope intercept form so for example let's say I have an equation of a line and I want to write the equation of the line that goes through these two points. I don't have a slope, uh, and I don't know the y-intercept. So, excuse me. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the slope. And we know that the slope formula is the change in the y, so the change in x. And so, y2 we could say is two minus six is equal to x2, which is 3, minus x1, which is negative 1. So this gives us a negative 4 over a positive 4, or just a negative 1 over 1, or negative 1. Now, I'm going to use point slope form to get the equation of the line. So y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So it doesn't matter which point I use. So I'm going to use the second point, and if you don't believe me, you can try using the first point and see if you get the same equation. So I get y minus 2 is equal to negative 1 times x minus 3. Again, I use this first point here, or sorry, the second point. And now I'm going to simplify this so that it's slope-intercept form. So I'm going to distribute this negative in. So it becomes negative 1x plus 3, and then I add the 2 to both sides. So I get y is equal to negative x plus 5. And that's the equation of the line. So that was nice, simple, easy. And now I know the y-intercept. Whereas if I wanted to use y equals mx plus b from the start, I would need to find the y-intercept, which actually is tedious and not needed.
So let's look at some examples here. So the first one here, number 11, says that there's a slope, negative 2, and it goes through, through the point 2, negative 4. This is not the y-intercept. So they give me a point and a slope. So I'm going to use point-slope form. It only really makes sense, right? So for number 11, I like to write out the formula every time I use it. It helps me memorize it a little bit better. So y minus a negative 4 is equal to negative 2 times x minus 2. y minus a negative 4, that's just y plus 4, equal to negative 2x plus 4. Now if I subtract 4 from both sides, I actually get y is equal to negative 2x. The y-intercept is at 0. So that's my answer for number 11. For number 12, I can see that I want to find the equation of a line that's parallel to this, and it passes through this point. Well, parallel lines have same slopes. So if this slope is negative 5, the slope for the new equation is also going to be negative 5. And it goes through the point 0, 2. So again, I have a point and a slope, so I'm going to use point-slope form. So again, y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So y minus 2 is equal to negative 5 times x minus 0. So this is going to be y minus 2 is equal to negative 5x. Uh, here, negative 5 times negative 0, or just 0, is 0. If I add the 2 to both sides, I get y is equal to negative 5x plus 2. This is the equation of the new line. Note that the slope here is negative 5, as it is with this equation. So they are definitely parallel. And finally, 13 is going to be perpendicular to the line y equals 2x minus 5. So perpendicular slopes have opposite reciprocal. So if this is positive, I know my new slope is going to be negative. And if this is 2 or 2 over 1, the new slope will be 1 over 2. And the point given is 10, negative 1. So again, they give us a point and a slope. So if I use point-slope form, this is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So I get y minus a negative 1 is equal to negative 1 half times x minus 10. And so this will give me y plus 1 is equal to negative 1 half x. Negative 1 half times negative 10 is a positive 5. If I subtract 1 from both sides, I actually end up with positive 4. So again, notice the slope is the opposite reciprocal from 13. So that is my correct answer. For all of these, I could have used slope-intercept form, but I chose point-slope form uh, because it was easier. It was more straightforward. And here's some matching. Now the thing with matching is um, pay attention to what's given and look at there. So without even looking at these questions, 14, 15, and 16, I can see that these lines, R and Q, they look like they're parallel. So they probably have the same slope. Oh, and look, I have two equations here that have the same slope. And I can find out the slope by counting. So I go up one to the right two, and that actually is a... Uh, positive one-half slope. Line R has a y-intercept at 2, and line Q has a y-intercept of 1. So that means that the first, number 14, must be R. Number 16 must be Q. And so 15 must be P. And I can figure this out because P also has a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of negative one-half. 